This is like a circuit breaker. It will help to reduce the risk. Masks are not something that you can wear and automatically get protected. With the transition from Doscon yellow to orange, we expect that this is likely to take time to resolve. Maybe months. Life cannot come to a standstill. But we should take all the necessary precautions and carry on with life. It has been 100 days since the COVID-19 outbreak changed life in Singapore. It all starts with a 66-year-old Chinese tourist from Wuhan, the first confirmed case in the Republic. He has been isolated and warded in the Singapore General Hospital and uh, we have also started the contact tracing uh, process. This comes a day after a multi-ministry task force was formed to coordinate Singapore's virus response. With more imported cases, Singapore imposes a 14-day leave of absence, or LOA, on students returning from China, as well as staff who work with vulnerable populations and who have just returned from mainland China. All 1.37 million households here are given four surgical masks each, following a run on masks island-wide. Singapore has recorded its first local human-to-human -human transmission of the coronavirus. Four people who did not travel to Wuhan have been infected here. The first cases of local transmission are linked to Yong Tai Hang, a Chinese health products shop. Singapore has raised the coronavirus outbreak alert to orange. This comes after three more Singaporeans were found to be infected. Following the announcement, Singaporeans rushed to supermarkets to stock up on groceries, including instant noodles and toilet paper. The next day, Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong calls for calm in his first video telecast to the nation. Fear and anxiety are natural human reactions. We all want to protect ourselves and our families from what is still a new and unknown disease. But fear can do more harm than the virus itself. Let us stay united and resolute in this new coronavirus outbreak. In his annual budget, Deputy Prime Minister Heng Swee Kiet announces a $6.4 billion package to combat the virus. A dinner at Safra Jurong, attended by many senior citizens, becomes Singapore's largest cluster so far. All in, 47 people are linked to this cluster. More social distancing measures follow. All ticketed cultural, sports and entertainment events with 250 participants or more are to be deferred or cancelled. PM Lee makes a second televised address to the nation after the World Health Organization declares the coronavirus outbreak a pandemic. This outbreak will continue for some time, a year, maybe longer. There are baseline things that we must get used to, like practicing good personal hygiene, adopting new social norms and discouraging large gatherings. In the next few weeks, the number of imported cases spikes as Singaporeans, including students studying overseas, return home. When Malaysia suddenly announces a two-week nationwide lockdown, hordes of people scramble to enter Singapore before the borders close. The government helps to find suitable accommodation for Malaysian workers here. The first patient has an underlying history of heart diseases as well as hypertension. The second patient was admitted to ICU in critical conditions after arriving from Indonesia. Travel restrictions are further tightened with a ban on all short-term visitors. The task force announces more stringent social distancing measures.
Meanwhile, residents returning from the US and Britain are required to serve their stay-home notice in dedicated hotels to reduce transmission. Mr. Speaker, words are not sufficient to express our appreciation for all of those who are. Singaporeans witness an emotional moment from Task Force Co-Chair Lawrence Wong in Parliament. Words are not sufficient to express our appreciation for so many Singaporeans going all out to fight the virus. And I just want to say a big thank you to everyone who's doing their part. With the situation ahead, DPM Hing unveils a whopping $48.4 billion supplementary budget to support businesses, workers and families. The Education Ministry announces that all schools will implement one day of home-based learning or HBL. The Health Ministry announces that there is a cluster of cases at the S11 dormitory in Pongol. In the days that follow, more dormitory clusters are found. With a new cluster at Liamoy Old Age Home, all nursing homes in Singapore are closed to visitors till April 30th. The increased community spread prompts tough circuit breaker measures aimed at keeping people at home. First, we will close most workplaces except for essential services and key economic sectors. Second, we will also move to full home-based learning in our schools and institutes of higher learning. Third, go out only to do essential things. Wearing masks is no longer discouraged, with reusable masks being given to all Singapore residents. Two dormitories are gazetted as isolation areas. This is over seven times. In Parliament, DPM Hing announces a third slew of support measures worth $5.1 billion. They include a one-off $600 cash payout for Singaporeans aged 21 and above. We had earlier required certain events and mass gatherings. Singapore kicks into circuit breaker mode. We will now also disallow social gatherings of any size with families or friends not living together at home or in public places such as parks and HDB void decks. Wearing a mask becomes mandatory. We will therefore extend the circuit breaker for four more weeks beyond the 4th of May, in other words, until the 1st of June. Then, provided we have brought the community numbers down, we can make further adjustments and consider easing some measures. More shops are shut in further tightening on businesses deemed essential, while the mid-year school holidays are brought forward. Singapore also extends another $3.8 billion in wage support for businesses. In order to forestall retrenchments. In PM Lee's Mayday message, he says Singapore has to proceed cautiously in restarting the economy. We should be under no illusion that all will be well the moment the circuit breaker period ends or the number of infections comes down. COVID-19 is this generation's challenge. The virus is a tough enemy, invisible but formidable. It is now our turn to prove that we are worthy of our forebears and up to the challenge before us. And I have every confidence that we will prove more than equal to the task.